Hello, my friends. I'm happy to introduce my third lesson to you. Uh, last time, I'm so sorry, the beginning of the lesson for some reason get cut off. So I just want to repeat what it was there. So our lesson started with the uh, our uh, program uh, for the second lesson about the mixing two main colors, which is uh, red and yellow, and we mixed orange from that. And the uh, second color, complementary color, was blue, which is remind to be the uh, main color. So because the other two we used to mix orange, and on the beginning of the video, unfortunately, that information get lost. But uh, I believe so. We kind of recover after that, and you guys saw what we did later. So I'm so sorry for that technical problems. But I hope today it's not gonna happens again sorry about that and i'm happy to introduce you our new topic for uh, our painting today which is going to be the mix of two other main colors which is going to be actually um blue and red and <coughs> excuse me and we're gonna leave yellow color as it is so we're just gonna try to paint today with the shades of uh what we can mix blue and red which is be gonna become purple and we're gonna leave the yellow with a variety of the shades uh, as it is and uh the topic which is we're gonna practice with that mixing will be mountains and I don't think so that you guys are gonna have problem with uh, imagining your mountains. They don't have to be perfect. I will show you a few pictures, of course, of them. And I will also tell about uh, some interesting uh, shapes which is mountains can have. And then you will choose what you like the most. This is my pictures of the mountains, which is I <clears throat> created for you as the example. And I want to show you a varieties of mountains what you can see in on nature. For instance, those ones, they're really sharp and very kind of more uh, looks like from Mars, <laughs> not like from the Earth uh, landscape. Uh, this is more common mountains what you can see in Colorado or Nevada, for instance. This is just a normal shapes which is kind of pointy but not too much and it also has uh for, for the high elevation it has the snow on them which is the low elevations uh, i believe so it still uh doesn't have that low elevation mountain doesn't have the snow on it so it's up to you you can put some snow on the top why not it's just gonna make it interesting so this is another one uh, which is has very very simple pointy uh, shapes that a mountain uh, mountain over here and another mountain over there it's all of them they have pointy shapes which is I believe a little bit boring we can work on the different kind of shapes which is gonna make our picture a little bit more interesting and this is interesting a uh, shape which is almost looks like a, a sand uh, dune shape of the mountain uh, I have some on the other side for you to take a look and then we can talk about a little bit like we were talking about of dunes last time that they have some layers or, or like a rose the first one and the second one and the third one uh, this picture of the mountains contain a few layers of the mountains like the first one on the front this one the more brighter one and then the more lighter and uh, kind of more bluish because it goes so far away to horizon so it has uh, shades of light purple colors so and this mountain has the most interesting shape which is has like the pointy toes uh, goes up to the sky and it's kind of slide down almost to the level of the next row and uh, over here uh, this is interesting composition because it has just the one mountain but the shape is really, really monumental, so very interesting. Those ones are just maybe like Seattle area can have this kind of mountains. 
and um, over there just uh, something which is really really look like more Hawaiian like volcano the, the old volcano shape of the mountain so uh, in the nature you can see different kind or look at this pretty one that's probably somewhere in Ireland uh, which is the uh, over there have interesting shapes, but it's also has the green moss growing on it. So um, this one over here, it's far away mountain, which is a pretty interesting shape. It almost looks like a piece of furniture, like a sofa uh, on the back of the horizon over here. So which is not interesting at all but the color this would look at this color that's what we're gonna use today we're gonna try to uh, mix purple and use it for our mountains so i think that's it's enough inspiration for us to get some ideas about mountains and uh we uh, why we are gonna use mountains for our lesson today i think that we can also on the example of the mountains talk about the rhythm rhythm this is something which is probably affiliated more with the music because when you clap your hands you can clap them differently and that's gonna create the particular rhythm our speech has a rhythm too so when we talk uh we we talk with particular speed uh and that's make the rhythm of our talking particular way so the song can have a rhythm, the speech can have a rhythm, and nature has a rhythm too in the shapes, but it's a little, little bit different kind of rhythm. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use today my uh, little portable easel, which is, I recommend you guys, if you want to invest in your hobby, uh, this is really convenient one, which is, has the uh, compartment for the uh, painting the tubes of the painting and it also has the easel part which is you can put on a different kind of levels and um, choose which will be more convenient for you I like when it's kind of pointy uh, on the top but it's still not too close to my eyes so that I can kind of see what, what I'm working on so I'm gonna make the pretty simple rhythm of the mountains, which is gonna be easier for us to, uh, for you guys to look at and for me to manage to uh, create the mountains on the paper, not overwhelm you <laughs> with too much information. So I think that I will go with the few uh, mountains lying like almost like triangles and uh, i will try to layer them a little bit so that you can see what's the difference will be between one in the front and another one uh, behind the mountains so i will create a few mountains with the sharpier a little bit more sharpier pointy top and uh, some of them will be kind of lying down like a lazy boy chair a little bit more less point and some of them will be behind and sometimes the mountains kind of double each other they have the same silhouette but uh, i'll just try to make a few different ones so that we kind of not get bored with the way how they're gonna look so and they will kind of come to the valley i'm gonna have the little volume front maybe we can put some green grass there that will be okay so basically here if last time we don't have to paint um and before we paint or to put too much drawing because we just have the line of the horizon before here we actually work with our crayon work uh any pencil you like uh a little bit longer because we need that shapes otherwise we're not gonna know where we're gonna put our mountains and when the other 
where the other pieces of our work will be. So this is going to be our mountains. And what I'm going to have today on my picture, I will have sky and I will have mountains and I will have a little bit of grass in the front. So we're going to have a few layers. So first it's going to be the grass, hills of the mountains and uh, the higher mountains, which is might be have a little bit of snow and sky. For the sky, we're gonna use today the shades of yellow color because of how uh, we were talking on the beginning that we're gonna use uh, the yellow as the main color and we're gonna use mix of blue and red for the complementary color. Uh, I will get my favorite bigger brush and I use my palette like last time. And this time I recommend you guys to use two containers with the water. One and the second one. Why two? Because uh, like we were talking about the white color and the yellow last time, that they get dirty very, very fast. So for uh, keeping the color clean, I'm gonna use one of the container with water for my lighter colors and another one for darker because we're gonna have like totally complementary opposite colors today, the darker purple color and the lighter yellow so that just use these two containers will be make sense so uh it's not necessary all the time but today i think that's a good idea so what we're gonna do uh we're gonna have our sky first because that's gonna be lighter color so i want that to be done with the clean brush and clean water so i start with my yellow with lots and lots of yellow. Um, I forgot to mention that the reason why I'm gonna use the yellow today for the sky because that's gonna be the sunset but uh, the sunset will be very very light like sometimes sun covered the sky so brightly that it basically become yellow and that's the condition of the weather we're going to use today. We're going to use lots and lots of yellow. So uh, again, if you remember, we were talking about that the uh, closer to horizon, the lighter the sky becomes. So that's going to be my lightest color. Just by the tops of the mountains, we're going to use that color. It still will be very, very light. And then uh, I'm going to add a little bit more intense yellow in that. See, that's going to be a little bit more yellow. To make yellow a little bit darker, I will just touch a little bit red. Just touch, just a quite a little bit, just just a tiny bit. Just to make it a little bit more intense. Because our yellow, for some reason, it's very, very light. Which is good, but just for contrast, let's just get a little bit of a red in that. So it's going to make our yellow a little bit brighter. Not orange, of course, but just a little bit brighter. And for the sky, I always recommend to use a little bit uh, more free strokes of your brush, which is create some very flexible, airy, kind of airy texture. Uh, more yellow for the brighter, brighter part, which is usually on the top of our head so that's going to be the brightest yellow on the top and 
and if you remember from last time we were talking about that the acrylic colors they has that tendency to get lighter when they dry and we'll keep telling that to you and remind that to you that you always won't forget to put intense color on your spots where you actually need that lighter or much more intense and brighter so for now i will stop let's see what's going to happen so when we finish uh if we need extra few strokes of a little more brighter yellow for now we're just going to leave it like that and then what we're going to do we're going to clean our brush it's easy to clean it from white and yellow because it's basically very light color so it's not that hard so then I will use for my purple, I will put first red, because red is lighter and the, the blue is darker. So when I put some red on my palette, I will clean the brush again and I get my blue in it. And this is how that interesting uh, process of mixing gonna happen. I will uh, show you a little bit closer. So as soon as you get a uh, mix of uh, yellow, uh, uh, not yellow, sorry, the purple, a uh, purple color uh, from the red and blue, it's become when you're mixing become intense purple. That intense purple we're gonna use. On the skirts of the mountains not by the tops but on the skirts of the mountains uh you need to follow your drawing so you're not gonna overlap your uh, colors where you shouldn't because uh, tops are lighter and the uh, uh, bottoms of the mountains are darker so i'm gonna use my purple uh at the skirts of the farther mountains and I can make the variety of it, of course, because that's what we're doing. We're mixing uh, and uh, actually ex make uh, some experiment with that. We'll see how that purple will change dramatically when we add more red in that. It's going to become more brighter and more lavender, uh, more as a lavender color not less purple but more lavender if we're gonna add some um white in that that's be gonna become really uh, looks like a lavender color so i will use that for another bottom of the ocean uh, bottom of the mountain so this ocean will have the similar color on the bottom sorry <laughs> And um, for varieties, uh, so because we have to kind of differentiate uh, the mountains by color because we don't want them to look like twins. We, we want the variety of colors. So I will use more uh, kind of burgundy color for that mountain. See how significant it change the color when you add more red in that. And for the mountains, if you notice, I will kind of repeat the shape of the mountains with my strokes. Uh, so they kind of kind of a triangle, looks like a, a pointy a triangle. So that's what I use my strokes, kind of shaping this up. So with our strokes, we shape up our mountains. If I use more blue, See the a purple become more darker on a different way darker. I will leave the top of it empty for now and I will get a little bit more blue in that. And what I'm gonna do, I will use a little bit of black in that. So it's not prohibited to use white and black when you mix uh, complementary colors because uh, that's what the colors black and white for. They they make different intensity of the 
natural in in that color so and i will have when i mix it i will have almost like a dark dark ink purple and i'm gonna use it for the darkest part like the darker bottom of mountains skirts of the mountains just to differentiate them and leave like that so the front row of the mountains they're not that high if you notice they will be more close to the level of their belly and so that's gonna make them lighter and i mix some purple color for them too for this too which is kind of going to be a little bit more brown so to make it brown remember when we did our first work we did um sand on the beach or uh, on a, a evening uh sunset beach uh we, we make it brown so for the brown we use red and black and a little bit of yellow so we're not going to add um, yellow in this today because yellow we use for the sky so for now we're gonna just use that black and almost purple color with the black make that dark contrast between the mountains if it's gonna be too hard for you you can just uh, have three mountains like that one two three and don't do another ones because that might become a little bit more complicated with more mountains you uh, draw so this is the another one and now i'm gonna wash my brush and put it on the side and i will use the medium size because i want to go with more details now and I uh, will use, first of all, because my brush is clean, so I'm using white from the beginning. And let's see what white going to do with our colors. For instance, let's just add it to this one. See, that's become kind of purple pink slash pink color. And we're going to use it for this mountain because that's what originally we have this color for this mountain and we're gonna add that pretty pink purple color to that mountain and then I'm gonna add this beautiful shade to all uh, the darker blue purple color which is what we have here and then I will use that to create another shade lighter shade of purple that's going to be the top for my other mountain and I usually I use that color for this mountain so with the white I just going to get extra color with the lighter shade of it and see how it's different compared with the other one and you can make tons of different uh, shades and varieties of this purple just adding neighbor colors which is we mixed before on a pot i need a little bit more white for the top use the clean clean brush always for that And for the top, that will be very, very light. Just like that. And then wash my brush again to get a little bit more white and use it for this color. The good thing about acrylic colors, they stay on your palette they don't dry that fast as the watercolor so we can still use them 
after a few minutes. So I'm gonna get that lighter color for my other mountain right here. And just leave it for now. Let's see how when uh, let's dry what we need to do more with them, how to differentiate them better. And let's just uh, work a little bit on the front. For the front, because those heels, we're not going to call them mountains, we're going to call them heels. So they kind of look in the front here and they deserve more attention because uh, our attention for these heels will be in uh, detail. So that's what uh, uh, I mean by attention because uh, with creating the shape of this front mountains, we're kind of going to bring them a little bit closer to closer to us uh, because if you remember we were talking about the perspective when we did layers the last time with our terrier of sand dunes and we were talking about how the farther ones they're lighter and the uh, same thing gonna happens here when we're gonna have our mountains in the front we want them to be more detailed and the farther ones less detailed so we're doing again here on the part we're making creating the purple for our front row i recommend to get more blue in that just to kind of discover what we can do with more blue on our plate and what shade of purple will give us that more intense color see with the blue it's create interesting shade of that purplish color but it's different so it's give us the layer so that that's not going to mix together with the other ones right yeah so just like that i'm gonna leave it for now and give this heel a little bit of breathing time so that it's going to show us the final color color later so uh and i want to get a little bit lighter color now to create the top of the heel of the of this one so i have here almost gray color which is just, it, it's totally fine because if i put in this red it's gonna give me still purplish color but a little bit different shade and i will use it for this top part of this heel slash mountain so that's more hill, look like more hill, I guess. I want to tell you a little bit about the direction of the sun, which is, for instance, on this picture, we don't see. It might be from there. The light can come from one side or from another side or straight from our point of view side. It doesn't matter. For this picture, we're not really thinking about this too much because otherwise it's going to be too much task for us to accomplish. Uh, we're working on our mixing of complementary colors task and we're not going to think too much about the light because that's the totally different story if we will follow the light uh, then to create the shape of these mountains then we need to decide from which side it comes so then we have to work on shadows today we're not doing that but on the real painting uh, when we kind of paint this for instance from the uh, nature uh, around us we have to put some shades on it but we're not doing that today just to make it more easy for you to accomplish because it's already kind of a lot of work to do today so next thing which is i gonna do i will get white 
color and I'm gonna get a little bit of red in that so that's gonna be the nice solid almost pink and I will try to mix that in blue just to get a different shade all we're doing today we just play with that shades of purple And this is going to be for my top of this mountain sky, on the hill, on this hill. And a little bit goes behind that. And then uh, I want to get a little bit more white in that blue color we had here. Blue gray, slash grayish kind of blue. And this color I will use for my heel of this mountain, that part of this mountain, right here. And this kind of gray blue will stay here as a color. We just need a little bit darker color, shade of it just for kind of finish the bottom of it and uh, the only one thing which is we need right now to do to clean our brush and come back to the middle part and I will use for that uh, heel lots and lots of red and uh, blue and I will try to make it clean as I could so no black, no white, just a clean purple. And that's going to be from just red and blue, nothing else. And that will be my purple for this hue. Just a classic kind of purple. No extra shades, no too much mixing, just straight blue and red. And just leave a little bit space for top because we're going to use our lighter shade of red just to put some more white and just taking very, very good my brush. And we have the white, and white will go uh, on this mix, on top of that mix, to create the lighter shade of this purple. And it's okay to get it lighter here, because then it's going to be kind of highlighted in between of this group of darker colors, create a nice color spot on this group. And for that one, for that one, we need more kind of grayish blue color, which is we use before to create the bottom of it. I'm gonna just do a like, very simple shade, just a bluish with the white. Even more white, just to highlight the side of the mountain. And then uh, I want to come back a little bit to the bottom of those heels and uh, make the nice finishing on the um, rows of these heels in the front with the darker color. And then we can put some more grass be in the front of it. It's too blue. And more red. And 
we're gonna leave it for now just like that and we will see when it's dry what else we need to add I'm just gonna put a little bit of grass in front just some sage bushes just to finish them and for that I need to clean up my brush really really good because it's gonna go in yellow color and use that yellow for the sage the sage usually has some mustard color which is like my sweater today I guess um but we don't want this to compete with our sky so basically for uh, this matter we're gonna use what we have in yellow but we're gonna mix that with the purple a little bit And that's gonna give us the perfect sage color. We don't have to worry about this too much because this is not a part of our mixing complementary colors. Unless it's just something to finish our work and just play with everything we have on our palette. That's what I do right now i'm just using uh, the leftovers of my light purple and yellow to create that layer of the grass sage bushes and some greens in the front and try to make it as simple as we can because we still need to come back to the mountains we don't want them to be unfinished and we're not gonna abandon them for now we just want to finish uh, our entrance to this composition with that kind of yellowish green color and the green it's another story with the green it's basically complementary color for red made from blue and yellow but that will be the topic of our next lesson another set of complementary colors but that happens today just by accident because we were just using our leftovers on our palette to finish the composition of this work and actually this is uh, gonna give us some experience with mixing yellow with purple which is in real life we will do a lot when we work on some landscapes for instance or when we're trying to make a extra shade of green color the purple and yellow will do the job thing. That's it for now with the grass and sage. Um, I want to really, really clean my brush wash this as much as I could because I need the lighter color right now I will get some white I use the bigger containers to pour the colors in a smaller one the only reason for that that I will keep my white cleaner as long as I could because if I use the bigger container like that and uh, make my white dirt, dirty uh, that's not going to be good for our work so that's why the smaller container the better it is the smaller is better so uh, then I will add my yellow and white for 
the smooth contact of the sky and the mountain. We kind of go by the shape with our yellow, very light yellow. Very light shade of yellow, just for little details over here. So we don't leave the empty spots. I don't like empty spots. I told you guys about them. Because they kind of ruin the colors around them. So you don't know what why it's empty. So what is because you forgot to put the color on it or it's a part of the composition or it's kind of a little bit look more like negligent a blended part usually. So uh, I want to mix a little bit more brighter yellow for the next layer of the sky. If we layer the sky a little bit with the brighter yellow, that would be better. So because uh, it's not going to be all one color, that we don't want that to happen. So let's give us some air on me in intensity too so even if it's a sky kind of made from air we still need the color so that for our composition because uh what we have today we have yellow against purple so as more intense the yellow will be the more contrast and complementary to purple is going to be My little container is finished, so I need some yellow. I will add some from the bigger container, as I usually do. And just like that, cover all these little empty spots and contact all the shades of this yellow. The yellow have a little bit of shades this time. We more work on purple today than yellow because yellow is just a main color today. We don't like really concentrate on that too much. We just need the nice intense yellow for contrast. That's what we need. And that's what we're doing. Finishing off with the sky creating that layer of beautiful yellow color. And we just leave it this way for now. And what I want to do, I want just to get a little bit of highlights on our mountains. And I will use the smaller brush and this, this one. And uh, I will still go with my purple for getting the just a regular, regular, regular purple from blue and red. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the corners between mountains with that intense color what it's gonna give us that's gonna give us the contrast between the shades uh, of the purple and highlight the next mountain but i can use the original shade so for the more blue and black mix like that I'll just use that original shape of the mountains with the original darker color. That's my corners. Uh, and next one will be 
this one but that one a little bit lighter so i need the lighter shade for that and i got it because i still have it on my palette i got it that's not exactly like this because this mountain is closer to us so i'm gonna need more details on the And I will add some extra shape on uh, And for that one in the front, uh, what I need, I need more red. I will put some red color on my palette and see you looking but still using that blue shape I use for this one but still have more red in that mix so I'm just covering the empty spot here which is left before because when you have a bigger brush it's hard to cover every corner of your picture with the bigger brush I guess the smaller one helps you with that and for that one this and this this uh, those mountains it has in the mix more red so I put some red in that mix to uh, create um, the right shade for them and it will be the most red less blue and just like that we repeat a little bit that shade for our picture And now uh, we need to contact these two pieces because for some reason they kind of get no, they they because they belong to two different mountains. So now we have to differentiate that one from this one, which is uh, going to be done by using more burgundy color so then it's going to differentiate that from this one because that one has more blue and just like that we're going to finish this part and for this one since it's so far away we're going to use a little bit of white in the mix we just mixed a few seconds ago uh, for that farther one we need to get a little bit lighter shade a shade of this burgundy color and for this one uh, it was i believe so it was purple with a little bit of black so i'm gonna recreate that color now just for a few spots here We don't want to make it too dark since it's kind of far away. And um, now we need to highlight our tops. You can choose for um, highlighting white just to imagine that it's the snow on the top. Uh, for that, I'm gonna use my purple with white. And highlight a little bit on the top. I need more white because it doesn't look like snow. We want to get a nice snow on top. That's better. By the end of the 
painting, usually our palette become overcrowded with shades of different colors, so be careful not to spoil some nice parts of your work with some unusual sh shade of color which is you wasn't expecting to get. So this is gonna be our snowy part. And for the other one, that one, it's higher. So it's a higher elevation of this mountain. It probably will request a little bit of snow on it. Just by the, according by the nature, on this picture on the top, you can see that it has some snow. So that's what I'm trying to recreate something like that and this a little bit of highlights will help us to separate mountains from each other because we're not talking about the lights today like I said we kind of um, make our self to forget about lighting from sun so we just use uh, the purple color in variety but we're not creating shapes of this mountains just using the different shades of purple to kind of make the difference between um, their position so what is on the front and what is farther but not the sunlight on them because that will be too hard from the beginning and I don't want to make you guys feel discouraged. <laughs> so I want you to feel more comfortable with mixing colors first and then with the next task, how to show the lights on the pictures. Okay, so what I did when I was talking, I did a nice pur uh, pink purple. And I'm going to use it for this cute mountain. The lady lady pink lady mountain and i will still put just a tiny bit of snow on this one too because that's kind of high too going higher to the sky so probably cold there so i'm gonna put some snow on this this one i don't know if I want some snow on it, but just highlight a little bit. So, and that one, which is next but closer to us, I don't know if we need snow on that, but I really want to get some highlight on that. Maybe not snow, but maybe some ice on it. So, just to make a difference between these two shades, okay? So, I'm not gonna put too much lighter snowy color just leave it like that that one maybe maybe yes maybe not but i think that uh maybe not snow but just a, it deserves some lighter shade on the top just to make a difference between colors and this one the same story we not really insist on snow on the top but I guess we can get some lighter shape on it. But that shade will give us uh, some highlights and difference between them. This one needs some more highlight because it's kind of getting lost a little bit there so I guess the same thing here I'm gonna get the highlights of the lighter shade of this purple and um I think that we need a little bit of kind of medium purple here just to have the better connection between the sage field and the mountain because this is too intense so what i'm gonna do i will use some p 
pink for that and have a little bit of red in that and connect it with the yellow so because this is the skirt of the mountain they they not gonna be too intense they kind of get that more earthy color which is that um red and yellow will provide for us just to not have this heavy connection with the deep color and the lighter green sage fill just to make it a little bit lighter for us to look at that so it's not that intense contrast because we already have the contrast between sky and mountain so we don't want to um, com compete that two contrast between each other contrast with the field and contrast with the sky so because that's important for rhythm and dynamic of your work so that we have main pieces of your artwork and some of them the submissive kind of pieces which is just help to finish the task but not the main characters of your work We're going to talk about this more later for now it's, it's something which is i'm just mentioning now it's not that important but uh, just to make your work finished and look m more real that's what i do now it's not the part of this task but just to uh, finish the work and make it look accomplished and, and uh, finished that's what i do because then it's kind of important too because uh, if it's unfinished front it will be just a white color that's not going to look nice and it's going to disturb our composition so we're not going to really see that beautiful contrast uh, between mountains and sky so this is good for uh, the grass and uh, only one thing I don't like, I don't like that unfinished piece right here. I want to get this mountain finished so that it's not going to have the empty spot on it. And over here same thing this is like I said that just the little details uh, you don't have to do it but I'll, I'll, I'll do it just because I want you to see my finished picture but if you feel like your task is accomplished you can drop this anytime which is I'm gonna do right now and I will show you my picture closer so that you, uh, you can see what we've done and I will show you some little details on that uh, so uh, what we did today we were talking about the two complementary colors yellow and the purple and the purple it's a mix of two other main colors blue and red and we left the yellow as it is because that's one of the main colors it's three of them red blue and yellow so what we did last time we used the uh, orange color which is we mix from red and yellow two main colors make it complementary to the blue and today we uh, use the main color yellow and make two complementary colors from another two main colors red and blue so we're just working on some main colors and trying to mix extra colors from them and make them look nice on your picture and 
like we said before, they complement each other. Look how the um, yellow color and the purple color complement each other. You can use it even in your clothing. Uh, because if you, for instance, have the purple dress, uh, the little bit of yellow, like a scarf, for instance, will bright up your purple. Uh, and the same will be opposite way. If you have the yellow dress, a little bit of purple will make, make that uh, yellow shine. And this is it for today. Uh, as the color theory uh, task, I just want to remind you about the other thing we were working on, about rhythm. And rhythm in composition and in art are very important too, almost like the same as in music. Uh, the rhythm creates the melody, uh, the rhythm in art and or in um, painting create your composition. Because if we put our mountains in a different layout, it's going to be totally different composition. So today we had a very, very hard task. We were working on a beautiful purple color, but we also were working on rhythm. And we utilize our knowledge today about the rhythm with the interesting, creating with the interesting shape for the mountains. And none of this hill repeat each other. They're all different. And that's what happens in nature. Uh, the hills and the mountains in the nature, they all different, as you can see in this picture. And this is going to be it for today. Thank you for listening. And see you next time. I hope you like my lesson.